a lot of people don't know this and don't uh, realize that I'm up under the coach uh, Sam Tree, your father's, because of I was coached by Joe Hampton, who actually was coached up under Coach Sam. And it um, it actually dawned on me when I came to the All Star game, and I was sitting in your office, and you know we were hanging out, and uh, you were welcome welcoming us uh, in there, and I was like, well, dang, I. I had so much uh, animosity against Fort Myers because you know, we rivals. And I'm like, they taught me everything I know, really. You know, and um, how was he, Coach? Because I've always been on the opposite side of him. You know, never really had an opportunity to sit down and talk to him. How was he as a coach? Well, go going back to Coach Hampton, you know, we, this will really probably date me as well. You know, Coach Hampton, when he came to Fort Myers, uh, from Palatka, yes. Uh, 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 he was my freshman football coach. So Coach Hampton came to Fort Myers, and uh, he left a, a, a legendary coach in Palatka, a guy named Jimmy McCool, and him and his wife moved to Fort Myers, and uh, someone told him to go over and see Coach Sam. And uh, so Coach Hampton just happened to be my freshman year. He coached freshman, and, of course, it didn't take long for – for Coach Sam to see what a what a jewel Coach Hampton was going to be, and he went right up to varsity. And uh, I was fortunate, and blessed to coach with Coach Hampton for two years before Astero High School opened. Mm -hmm. uh, so got to work. You know, he coached me, and then I got to coach with him. And uh, and then uh, of course, you know, all the years through coaching and the FACA and FCA and. Uh, you know, Coach Hampton uh, became like a second brother to my father and, uh, and and like a relative to me. You know, he's been great and uh, got me into our, uh, you know, my dad and, and himself got me into the FACA and kind of showed me the ropes and the things that, you know, that you need to do as a, as a coach, the networking and giving back to your profession. And so I had some great mentors. But as far as Coach Sam went, I think the best compliment I could give him as a coach on uh, things I, you know, I was blessed to get to learn so many, you know, being of course as my father, but um, I thought one of the things that he had, he had two skills that, that I thought might've even, you know, have been his, you know, things that kind of separated him and his longevity was one, he was a great people person. He could build a relationship. Uh, you know, he was always very, uh, you know, you know, you know, very, very forthright, honest, but he did it in a way and could, and could, uh, I saw him take a lot of kids. He could get that trust factor built in very quickly. Um, uh, you know, the second thing that, that, uh, actually the third, three things, the second thing from, from a coaching standpoint, uh, you know, he was old school. I mean, he grew up in a time when, you know, the forward pass was, what, what, you know, was, was not, it was not thought it was a good thing. But I watched him evolve over time. I watched him evolve and, um, you know, he kept his principles of the things that he felt were important. I think all good coaches do that. But he also evolved with the times in terms of, uh, of you know, whether it was schematically or whether the, the, the ever-growing, changing environment for teams and, and, you know, the different roles that the coach had to fill. So I got to watch him from his, you know, when I was really young as a water boy, you know, he was a, you know, he was a very intimidating figure, you know, not just as my father, but uh, at the same time as he, as he mellowed, as he aged, he always garnered respect, but he had a, a great way of adapting to, you know, to the changing times. And the third thing, which really isn't as a, as a football coach, he had a very, big picture vision. I know in the 70s when we established our booster club, and in those days it was kind of in vogue that you would have just a quarterback club or a touchdown club of football boosters. And I remember Coach, you know, he, you know, he really, you know, he coached other sports back when he started, but, you know, everybody obviously knew football was his love. But, you know, when he was, when he was the athletic director, he always had a vision of, of having a full sports program and, and he didn't let us at Fort Myers and he went through, you know, a lot of his best boosters, his best supporters, you know, kind of, I don't want to say fought him on it, but didn't understand what he was thinking when he demanded an all sports booster club. And he always believed that, you know, outside the box of just his little world in football. And, uh, 
uh, always and to this day, you know, we have a great all sports booster club. He believed in that. He believed in, uh, he believed, you know, obviously he, you know, people thought he always bled green, but he built relationships with, with, with coaches and kids at other programs. And he was a big supporter of the whole of this area. You know, he, you know, you'll talk to people that got into the profession that said, you know, your dad took the time to, when I was getting started to show me the ropes and, and, and do things, you know, to what would be considered rivals. So, you know, he did, he had a, he had a way of, of seeing the big picture and adapting and, uh, and he was a great communicator. And I, and I think, you know, as we're nothing more than te- we're teachers. And I think the greatest coaches uh, will have those same values. Right. Now, Coach, I sit back, you know, and it's funny that you say all those great, wonderful things about your father. But when I came in, that's the same thing that I saw there when we came there for the All-Star game. Because, you know, as a coach, especially first year, I, ha- I, I, I taught myself to pay attention to a lot of stuff and the respect and the, you know, the light and the joy that the kids and the relationships that you had inside the locker room when we were inside the All-Star, you know, you can tell, you know, that the apple doesn't fall far from a tree. How did you, you know what I'm saying, continue uh, building, you know what I'm saying, the Fort Myers program, you know, after your father when you took over? Well, first of all, you know, appreciating, you know, the kind words, you know, I, I remember you as a player, you know, we had, we had a lot of sleepless nights getting, those are some great games. Those, people don't realize that the Fort Myers Estero uh, rivalry, you know, it, it was very special, not just the fact that there was that five, six, seven year run where we always played last and it always, mm-hmm. been, but it was very special that, what I liked about it, and I've been fortunate to be through a lot of rivalries, and some, you know, become the Hatfields and the McCoys, but some have a different tone to them. And I think it was the fact, the relationship with Coach Sam and Coach Joe, and and, and you've got to remember when Estero High School opened, it was almost like Fort Myers South from Dr. Browder and Miss Logan and Miss Booker. And so Estero, the, the, the original uh, – culture built at Estero was a lot of the Fort Myers culture. It was the same people. Right. Uh, so, so it made that rivalry special. And uh, I've been fortunate to be through. We have a great rivalry with an outside county team with Charlotte that has kind of has been in that mode. And I think we don't have enough of those. Listen, you for, for 48 minutes, you know, I'm sure well, you, you know, you know that, that for 48 minutes, you know, you wanted nothing more than to beat us and vice versa. And I know right. <laughs> But if there's a respect in the rivalry, if, if, you know, if we appreciate what each other is trying to accomplish, I think that's the best part of sports. That's what sometimes gets lost in, you know, in some of these real blood bitter rivals that, that I think the life lessons and the things that the, that, you know, you teach kids, you know, lay it all out on the line, but it's still ultimately, you know, you respect your opponent because they're working just as hard as you are. And, and, and it's easy to be on the winning side of something. So, you know, good or bad, win or lose, it's easy to be, it's easy to be a good winner, but, you know, you need to also, you're going to have way more pitfalls in life. So you need to learn to be a good loser. I know in 98, you know, you, you know we won the district. And, Coach yep. Andy, and I think, it, you know, his greatest accomplishment was being able to take a group of guys, you know, in a, in a you know, I remember that's, we had a slugfest, like seven to nothing. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Or, or actually, that was the year. Actually, it was the year we had that was a three-way tie. Yep. So to to, to pick hey, up, hey. you know, pick up, you know, get through it. Pick, you know, pick up your bootstraps, and 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 then to, to make the run you guys run uh, made was, you know, a great testament to to the belief and the things he instilled in y'all. So. Uh...